okay, leaders, guys, we are uh, in, um, in YouTube channel, Fabriano in Aquarello 2021 live. And so uh, we tell the audience that we were wondering if we were uh, supposed or not to go on with the discussion. And um, as long as uh, this task, this uh, item is very important, is very dear to us because we have been wondering ourselves a lot about um, this matter. Uh, we thought that maybe we can add a little bit more Raul, do you want to take from the point you close or uh, do you want okay. to? Okay, thank you, Anna. Um, it was literally a uh, uh, very uh, uh, moment of this uh, hour. This hour, uh, the biz this biggest question is that uh, how could we uh, go for uh, this kind of uh, competition? So competition uh, contests are everywhere. Uh, as we can see in every pages uh, in, in, in the social media, all across. Another question is that how can we handle this kind of competition? Whether this kind of competition is uh, actually a motive of organizer or not, solo motive of organizer or not. Uh, that was actually a, a kind of uh, questions for us in this, in this uh, discussion. Because when we talk about ethics and uh, competition, there are many points that we can uh, go further. Uh, we have picked up this one because of this situation is uh, making us uh, uh, to discuss about this, uh, this point. Uh, how can we handle this kind of competition as an artist? Uh, I would like to see as an art community, uh, like those are uh, really emerging artists and has come to this field of art, they basically uh, want to associate with uh, uh, a lot of network and uh, recognized association. Uh, I don't want to name their uh, name those uh, associations. Uh, they have a motive to engage their self with this kind of uh, association a lot. Uh, and that is not anything harm in it. I believe uh, every artist has the dream uh, to participate, to associate, to connect with um, uh, uh, famous artists, uh, uh, master artists. It is very, very uh, factual and it's very obvious. But thing in the uh, thing in this moment, like sometimes uh, artists forget uh, that where to stop. Uh, because in this context, uh, they uh, keep doing and doing and repetition of repetition of same thing uh, comes to the uh, social media so much that uh, things becomes very generic. And, uh, and uh, all of a sudden we lost our interest into it. Uh, so for the artist, uh, it's, it's a kind of a point that if we can think before we uh, want to participate or try to associate with those as association. What's your uh, value, what's their value addition in your art? That is the first question Then you need to make it. Like uh, if this competition, what kind of this, whether this competition is giving you such kind of value add to your career, to your, to your uh, art life or not, that sometime you need to ask this question to yourself. And, uh, uh, when you believe that, okay, there are a lot of kind of joy, fun and, and value addition from those association, feel free to associate with them, to learn from them, to learn from the master artist and the celebrity artist. Uh, on the other hand, for the, for the organizer, I have mentioned that they need to clear their objective. Uh, what objective actually I'm talking about? Objective is that, that whether this is a kind of platform that is developing an artist mind frame and uh, support system of an artist, or just to, uh, just to create a, a kind of a business or a kind of a transaction where uh, the prize money and uh, the recognition uh, would be the only sole uh, factor uh, to this kind of contest. So these are these two questions are both of the side, uh, not for, for only artists, for the organizers too. If organizers are very much clear about their objective that they want to make money out of this contest, there is nothing wrong because they are very, very clear from their beginning that, uh, uh, that um, uh, this is the motivating factor for them, giving them prize money and this one. But somebody, some, some association who wants to create a kind of platform where uh, emerging, emerging artists gets a lot of support, uh, not only in terms of um, 
uh, exhibiting, uh, but with a lots kind of kind of forum engagement, kind of interactive session, kind of workshop that actually give artists a lot of space and create a kind of community. Uh, and I have a like kind of curiosity also. Uh, you mm -hmm. have. You, have, you are doing for a long time like 12 years is not a small small time that for for a decade you are doing this kind of activity and you are you are balancing so well uh, that's why you are so fascinated about uh, Fabriano. Fabriano is a kind of uh, pride for us because we see that there is a balance and uh, what you think so like uh, how could you manage this kind of thing because I know as a as a curator you are always against a competition so can no, you can no, no, no. no wait Raul uh, no first let me, guys let me thank you on the professionality and the clear way both of you have handled uh, this topic today because this is a very difficult topic to be faced and as long as you can see it from different point of view from different perspective and each of them are valuable uh, it's difficult to give an answer to the many questions you have asked and that we have been wondering for ages. Myself, I don't think I have uh, a definitive answer at all, but there are many things that we can um, keep wondering about to better understand which is the best way to behave and to relate to each other, because at the end, the point, this is the focus. It is the relation between each of us. First thing, let me say, while, while you were talking, I was thinking, and I was thinking that talking about competition, um, it is not negative. The competition is, uh, is uh, not, not always something that is negative. It can also be um, um, positive because uh, in, in, in marketing purpose, for example, to have good competitors means to have a value for your own business, for example. This is mathematic, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, scientific, I would say. But in our field, uh, uh, can the, the, uh, the, the question is, can we use the same uh, parameter? Is it the same? And if you, if you watch the topic from one point of view, sometimes competition becomes negative. It becomes negative when the relation between, between the competitor is spoiled by uh, stolen ideas, uh, many things actually. Each of us can uh, knows because as we all have lived and we have experimented, or because there is people doing uh, big business out of our artistic life, and uh, many many things are negative. Some others are not negative, but. Before you mentioned that uh, that our behavior um, must be balanced, or uh, we must decide if we want to uh, act to give to to do charity or to do profit. And again, I was thinking that there is something balancing in the middle of the two, because between charity and uh, and, and and between profit in the middle, at least in our matter, there is art. Because first we are artists. Then all, most of us, almost all of us are also professional artists or professional um, actors in any other ways in the world of art. And as long as uh, we uh, behave honest, behave uh, uh, openly, and uh, as you said, uh, we um, are clear about what are our um, 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 items, what are our um, tasks, uh, everything is very easy and everything becomes very clear. About Fabriano in Aquarello, um, uh, Raul, I have to say that it is easier it is not as much difficult as it is if we uh, do this discussion open to all the world of art organization because Fabriano in Aquarello decided at the very beginning before 
we started. We decided we decided we should organize not a classical event, but we wanted to organize um, a world watercolor conference, a professional watercolor conf conference. Professional, professional. Maybe we use the word professional in Italian um, to, um, instead of the word scientific. And we thought that Fabriano and Aquarello should have organized that kind of meeting that usually are organized among scientific science people about, about doctors, about um, lawyers, or uh, world politicians, or these kind of things, where uh, the um, conference is a meeting point. Uh, where many different kind of professional people go there and they share the knowledge. So when we talk about Fabriani and Aquarello com being com competition or not being competition, it, it is easier not to make confusion because as uh, we are talking about a, a meeting conference, we already are open to any kind of behavior and any kind of behavior we are open to welcome, uh, to listen to and to value as good and as bad point of view and to enrich our own um, knowledge, our own uh, uh, understanding and experience by what the other, the other people are uh, bringing to us. So it is, it is a lot easier uh, to talk about Fabriani and Aquarello in a way where competition is positive and very welcome. There are the different points of view because the different point of views makes us understand what is the world developing like and what we want to be. Do you understand? Mm. So, so this is a world apart, let's say. But still, it is important that we wonder on the world of art if it is better to be faced in one way or if it is better to be faced in another way. Usually I, I get a lot, a lot of requests from many uh, artists, not, not only watercolorists, artists, modern and contemporary artists from all over the world. And they ask me if they should participate to an invitation or they should not. And usually if I have no time to understand what the invitation is like and where it comes from. I always tell the artist, especially the, the young one, to always say, why not? Yes, yes, participation is always important, especially at the beginning of the career. Because anyway, if you keep your art inside, in, in Italian we say inside the drawer, it means that you hide whatever you produce, whatever you do as an artist. Uh, it is like if you do nothing and it is like if you are nothing. So at the beginning of the career, any artist need to uh, become able and aware that he has to share. And any invitation that, the, that an, a young artist gets, it's a, it is a good occasion uh, uh, to participate, to experience, to grow, and always do with um, uh, an attitude of wondering on what you have done and if, if you behave well or you did, you did not. And, and if the experience you had was uh, positive or negative and how to reorganize yourself, how to, to reorganize your life in relation with what you have lived. This is a, a, a very good way to behave always. Uh, in this behavior, it's always important to behave correctly and honestly, especially uh, to yourself, because you are the first person you have to be correct to. Uh, myself, the first person that judge myself is me. And the, per the first person I have to respect and to take care of is my feeling, is my um, philosophy, my attitude to life and whatever I do, even if sometimes I behave in a way that I don't like because uh, I have to choose sometimes to be someone else. Uh, that later on, I always have to wonder if uh, what I did responded to my expectations. This is the, po the first point. The second point, Raul, is also that um, as professional in the field of art, we all, we all have the need of uh, growing a business to grow 
profit because all of us have uh, to pay the cost, the bills of everyday life. But then there is a point uh, where uh, you have to be clear again to yourself and you have to decide which is the point that you don't want to cross and, and, and you, you don't, you, you don't uh, want to be the person you are not. Uh, and uh, and uh, what, what is the, I, I don't know the English uh, uh, exact name of it. What, what is the barrier uh, that exactly. you have, you have yeah. organized for yourself, not, not to exaggerate, this is it. And um, I, I think by this very silly uh, expectation, uh, you, you can go on for uh, the best to be proud of yourself and to be proud of what you did. Then there is another point of view <laughs> that is the relation to the people. And the relation to the people depends again on what you are, on your expectation, on, on your life. For myself, I, I can respond as Anna Massimissa first. For myself, the relation is something that has the most important. But this is uh, because I am born like this. I don't know why. And, and I have to respect myself and I have to respect the others in relation to this expectation that I have. And the relation among art with the people that are also artists and who are my competitor, my, let, let's say, positive competitor in the field of art is something that can enrich you more than the money you can earn. So from my point of view, and maybe again from Fabriano and Aquarello point of view, this has done the difference. But then the, the answer is up, is up to each of us. Do you agree, Didier? Yeah, yes, I, you're right on many points, but I, I want to add something. Uh, when you said to young artists that uh, it's important to, to participate and uh, you said, uh, why not? Um, I agree, but with um, uh, one condition. Before, in the past time, um, artists uh, work worked sorry um, a lot in uh, their workshop and they try to to find a right um, a style and uh, sometimes they did an exhibition and today you you have the um, the, um, the opposite you understand you have Maybe I know some artists like this. You have a um, uh, small time to, to work. You have one, I, uh, it's a, a big line, uh, one or two paintings, and you share every time, everywhere with uh, only maybe two, four, ten uh, paintings. You understand my, my meaning? And when do you work? When when do you paint? When do you work to 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 build uh, yourself to 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 find your? Uh, so it's um, uh, competition. It's possibly to uh, to have a competition, a positive competition. I agree with you. Okay. But in our um, discussion with Raoul, we, we try to underline that it's important to, uh, to go slow and to have the, the good balance, uh, as he said, that you are, you are, as an artist, you have to work, you have to paint first. Paint, paint, paint. Try to learn your art. Try to master your art. And... Sometimes, many times after, you can share, you can participate to events. And uh, with a young artist today, you, you can see the, the opposite. They, uh, they, they did uh, maybe one painting and you can see this painting everywhere. Didier, because this is part of the honest part. <laughs> We, we said you then have to wait how much you are honest and how much you are correct. 
This yes, is yes. part of being honest and being correct because yes, if, you, if you have one painting and you always use the same painting. No, uh, okay, uh, one painting is, uh, uh, yes, okay. Uh, <laughs> maybe 10, maybe, uh, but you understand, maybe in uh, only one year in, uh, in your uh, art and uh, the system, the network, the social network, the events uh, like competition, etc. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I don't uh, know the, the word. No, no, no. The it, point is very, no, it's very it motivates the, the young artist and the old also to to be everywhere and uh, when they have time to to paint. Uh, Raoul decided a uh, few weeks ago to uh, to go um, to come out from uh, social to media come out to, uh, yeah. social so media. i just yeah i don't to add here thing is that it is not required that everybody needs to behave like me it is my decision that yes. to come out from the social media to yes. to like to uh, minimalize myself to the digital world okay now my objective is to something different it is not to just promote my own own things rather than continuously value adding myself as an artist. So it is a kind of decision. I believe Anna has put that uh, word very nicely. And for your side also, I understand that there are too much of uh, messages or postings all across social media. And that is too much refutation of the same thing. And uh, what you say Anna, on this, like how to handle even, I don't know, this is a very stupid question even, how to handle this social media? Uh, for an artist, because it is uh, it is I too said, much. Are you asking me? I do yeah, no, I am just asking uh, how artists would behave like the young artists. What is your suggestion? Well, uh, it Advice. Is very, it is very easy. I find the social networks are something that you have to. Um, I, I, again, I don't have the English term. Uh, you you must uh, control. control. Yeah. Because and not let let them to control you, and it is the social network are done to be controlled. Exactly. So myself, for example, you know, do you want to know what I do? I have a family, yes, I have please, a go job, ahead. and I have many things. So what I do is that I open the social net network late in the night. I don't watch at the social network during the day. Never. I never do. There is a time in, during the day when I have a look. And some days I don't even look at, at the social network at all. Sometimes I don't even read the emails at all. And I believe me, I have so many that sometimes I have to, to say, okay, now I shut up. I, I close the door because I need to stay with my family to, to do my job and to paint. And I need sometimes for myself. And nothing bad with that, Raul. That for me it's easy because I get up very very early in the night and I paint and I have a lot of time for myself and I like to use true, that time. True. But we are not all the same, so. True. No, I believe uh, it is nothing bad in it. That's why I left it because that is my conscious decision. That how can I live without social media? That's kind of challenge for me. It is not like a bad effect that I, I want to come out because you cannot escape from the problem. You need to find out but, the solution. Raul, I, I was born when social network didn't exist because I'm very old. Oh, <laughs> People no. don't know, but I am very old. <laughs> exactly. Video, videos. And I lived when social networks didn't exist. That time, if you, go, if you were call, called by the telephone and your phone was ringing, not this one, but the one, you remember the black one? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when, when the telephone rang, you had to be ready to respond because someone was, was looking for you. And if you were not ready to respond at that moment, a, a, a relation was lost. Okay. True. Now, the social networks have a very huge, very big uh, uh, value because if you are called by an email or you are uh, searched by uh, a social network or whatever, and you, you don't, you are not there to respond, you can watch and respond one hour, two hour, ten hour, ten days late, later. True. And True. this is incredible the technologies in this kind of things have enriched la our life like crazy this is a lot more freedom that we got we have got from the social networks and Anna, i just want to add one point here very interesting I, we don't have so much of time one famous artist we've basically i used to follow that famous artist has a lot of social media followers particularly instagram 
one day that artist put a message that that artist is very senior uh, he is from france and he may put the message that i am very upset nowadays i am not getting so much of like in my painting i am i am deciding that from now onwards i am not going to put my painting on social media yes Anna, you want to say on, on this? I really want to hear something from yourself. I, I share very few of my paintings, Raoul. I, I, no, no, I'm, I'm you asking you. all know that I share very few. Yeah, of that my is paintings. that is as an as an individual. I am not asking. I am asking as that 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 artist is very senior most, and that artist has also that kind of feelings as a kind of insecurity feelings. No, no, no Raoul. I was uh, answering like this because the answer is. Uh, you, you are not getting famous because you are in the social networks. Exactly. Rather, you are exactly. getting famous if very serious, seriously, like Didier said, you work every day and you feel that you need to do art every day of your life. And mm -hmm. to do art, to express yourself by art, any kind of art, not just painting. Yes. Yes. To express yourself by art and the need of expression by art this makes yourself being an artist, not True. being a hundred times a day in True. the socials, True. maybe always with the same paintings. And something <laughs> else, last night we had an incredible meeting with uh, Nicolas Lopez. Nicolas is very much different from many other artists, but many of, our, of, of us are like him. Being an artist also means to go on and develop yourself in the relation with art and research and research and test and try and right. practice every, every day. This makes the young artist being an artist. But of course, they have to confront with the socials, they have to confront with the world of art, with the exhibition, yes. with the audience, with, with the curators. Yes. Who, who that is another uh, topic that is very okay. difficult <laughs> yes, to yes. be treated. Maybe, yes. guys, we should open a discussion like we did today on, on the uh, platform in a forum, in a special forum. Exactly. Because you see how important those topics are to be wondered about and to be shared. We, we, mm -hmm. we don't do enough, enough. We are not doing enough. True, true. Right. Okay. Now, sorry if I stop you. Uh, I yes. need to. to it's watch, time. Uh, um, time o'clock. Uh, Aidan O'Reilly and uh, Peja Simovic are in the chat. Are they in? Okay. Aidan, yes. Uh -huh. Because in a few minutes we have to switch from this ta to this item to the, the next one the next that one. is about horizon gas painter. But no, if you want to say something else, we can take one or two minutes more. Just no, to, close, yeah. to do the. So I believe uh, it is very difficult to conclude this kind of discussion uh, in one hour. Uh, yes, I would yes. like to write out, and even our forum would be there. To support the artist and we can still uh, extend this kind of communication there also because if you if you go to www.internationalwatercolormuseum.com uh, you can uh, see a wonderful forum over there and uh, please try to connect over there and a lot of topics uh, uh, on art uh, classical art uh, the emerging artist and we can come to know about this kind of discussion over there so it is a, a fantastic initiative from Fabriano and I would like you to upload your profile there complete your profile there and you will get connected with all across the globe uh, Raoul Please. now and Didier and uh, thank you a lot uh, we now very very silly we do very silly things, but we do. Just, <laughs> we do. We do. Just because we are also uh, playing a game. We, uh, we, close, we close our microphone and we close our cameras and we count one, two, three, and when we start with the uh, next topic, okay? So, one, two, three. And here we are again, Fabriana in Aquarello 2021 with beautiful Pejas Asimovic that I don't see you since very long. It's a pleasure to see you. And with Aidan O'Reilly, who is also here with us. 
to talk about um, Horizon, uh, 2020 Horizon and 2020 Gas Painter. Uh, the two challenges that we have uh, been proposing to the World Watercolor Friends in the past months and that we enjoy to organize and we enjoy to follow. Uh, I think we should start with Peja. Peja, uh, remind us why you invented this challenge. No, I, like all of you, we all think a lot of the things that happened recently, especially about the coronavirus and everything. So I was thinking that uh, before that, uh, all of us were in uh, some kind of fairy tale in a, in a life uh, which was uh, pretty much nice. And our answer and our response to this life was this, what we do. But then when the problem starts, uh, I was thinking that uh, our answer to a life or to art must be different. So when the difficult times come, I think that the, all of us start to behave in a different way. So I was thinking maybe the artist will also uh, paint differently. Uh, maybe it will be fun for them. Maybe it will be some kind of discovery for them. Uh, maybe some of them will realize that they do not have to be uh, prisoners of their own style. I'm not saying nothing against, against the style, but maybe some of the artists are bored to do in the same way like the people expect from them to do. So I, I was thinking this is the chance for everybody to feel free to give uh, another perspective, another look to the art and give maybe another answer to the planet. The, uh, wh while you talk, I will show some of the paintings that uh, were done by the artists during the uh, 2000 gas paint, 2020 Gas Painter Challenge. And uh, uh, can you give us a comment on what you saw from the result of the people painting on uh, their, their art, their new art? Mm -hmm. I shared the screen, so I go to, to, to show you some of the... Uh, paintings what, that were done. Okay, listen, this, this uh, subject, uh -huh. For example, this is, no, let, let's go from the beginning. Uh, uh -huh. this, this one, the first one in the top was done by Marika Servolo and she, um, uh, she didn't post herself. Do you remember how it works? That the artist was, yes. was not uh, revealing who he was and it was a, a friend artist who posted in the web the, uh, the paintings. And this one, the first one was done by, by Marika Servolo, Catania Pascal. What do you think about why the paintings were coming out? What did you feel? No, listen, first of all, it was for all of us, it was something new. So uh, maybe in, in future months or years, the, the many artists will wish to, to do some things like this because even I with my friends talked with them about it and they didn't understand it well. So I, I think maybe not all of them understood uh, uh, for example, Gonzalo Cid, I know, and this is, uh, I can comment the artist that I know. So I know him and this, it is different than he is usually doing things. So in my opinion, this is the, maybe the, the rest for them, or uh, like I said, another view, and it must be interesting for them to do in another in another way maybe to use another palette or another colors or uh, look massimiliano also i love look at mine uh, yeah. <laughs> no i mean 
I, I thought, I, I tell you why I did this. I thought that you were a genius and that you had done, uh, given us the start to uh, do something that we would never do. So I thought that I had never done uh, realistic art and I wanted to try. Okay. Yeah, because, and, listen, Anna, from my experience, uh, the painters who are, for example, well known, many of them, uh, I don't know, is it, is it a heavy word? They are afraid of the public because the public and the followers, they are used to it and of certain style. They are get used to it and they expect certain things from the certain artists. But for me, art is a play. It's a game. game. You must enjoy and, and play this game all your life. Never mind if you are 16 years old or 82 years old. In, the, in your soul, you must stay fresh and uh, young and different and many other things. And I think that this positivity from, from this feeling that especially young artists have because they are, they are less afraid to do a mistake. Mistake is a good thing. This is not a bad thing. If you do the, the work, watercolor in this case, and it is not perfect, but it is different than, than you do it before. It's a step forward. It is not step back. And also the time we were living was it was a still time. And probably it was the perfect moment to, to test something different or to try to be someone else, right? Sure. Because we as, as, as people, we always pay attention on some things when all when these things already happen for example uh, about the trees or or about the air or about when we have information that the air the pollution is high then we start to to worry about these things why not worry and do things before this happen the same is with the art because every of you artists must go inside deep inside of yourself and find out what else you can say to the world. Because you paint, these are your words. You don't have to speak. Your painting should speak uh, for you. So if you are telling me the same story every day, I know the story. Why don't you tell me another story? This was my idea. So, Peja, thank you a lot. And I, I tell you, we expect that later on uh, we want to go on with the challenges because we saw that the challenges is a good way to stimulate the people to change and to, to see world from another perspective. And artists, uh, watercolor artists need a lot to be pushed a little bit. So we expect that you invent something else. Please promise us that you will do. Don't okay. worry, I have, I have a lot of, <laughs> of ideas and you have a system to provide that this is functioning. So yes. it is I think thing. it is. We have just started. We have, we, have start, we have given a first push and then probably the artist needs some more. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you a lot. Thank you. And I now do... we go on with Peja, with um, Aidan O'Reilly. Uh, um, Ch second challenge because Aidan invented the 2020 horizon and maybe um, um, Aidan you can tell us uh, why you invented uh, your challenge and where you wanted to arrive. Okay, thank you Anna, thank you Anna Mercedes. Uh, thank you everybody in Fabriano, uh, it's good to be here. Uh, the horizon project, the idea was that I suppose, like Anna said, when she introduced the project online, it was, we were all separated due to the COVID and yet we were all still together in our minds. And with the horizon, the horizon is common throughout the world. And the horizon is always at eye level. So all our eyes are always on the same level. We're always at the same level of the horizon. So we were all looking out towards the horizon. Therefore, we were all together and we were joined. And then the idea came to paint one big picture, which we couldn't do because we're all separated. 
but the idea was that we would paint our own pictures with the horizon and the fact that all our eyes were on the same level we could join the paintings together into one joint painting. Also the idea is that it's a video and the video can be shared throughout the world and people can see at any time. Uh, the response was wonderful, I was fascinated, each painting was beautiful. I was going to select, uh, but I couldn't select, so I put all the Painting. You go, uh, I, I'm sorry if I interrupt you. While, while you explain, may I go with the video so that yes, you, while you do. talk, the people please can do. watch it. Turn the sound in the video down a little. So this is it. And this is the beautiful video. Uh, I done did a big job to organize it. Thank you a lot. Go on, I done. Go on with the. Um, information. Yes, this is the video. Uh, I collected the paintings through the platform. It was the best way to collect the paintings. Uh, people sent paintings to me through email, through Facebook, through Instagram, through all different ways. But the only way to do it was through the platform. So if your painting is not here, it's because it wasn't in the platform. But your painting is still part of the Horizon project. Even if you didn't send in your painting at all, all paintings that were painted with the idea of the horizon are part of the project. And uh, the project itself is made also in PowerPoint on a loop so that it can be added to and it can be shown in the exhibition center as a continuous loop. This video we're looking at here is a 13 minute video with over 300 horizon paintings in and it's on YouTube. Yes, and later on we will give you the link so that, that anyone can enjoy um, directly to watch all the, the paintings that were, believe me, they, they were beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I thought that the uh, proposal that Ida uh, gave us to paint our own personal horizon, to build a common horizon in the year of COVID, so this is the, the horizon uh, in the year of COVID uh, with the perspective of three, more than 300 artists from all over the world. It's a concept, a concept, a conceptual art performance that was uh, incredibly beautiful, I, I believe, with a, a lot, a lot of meanings from many, many point of view. See how beautiful. It really was a pleasure for me to participate with this. When the paintings arrived, uh, thank you Clelia for sending the paintings. Uh, each one was more beautiful than the next. True. And the second step of the um, challenge was that out of the uh, more than 300 um, uh, paintings that are in the video, um, I don't remember how many, Elia, a hundred. A uh, hundred were selected and we asked the artists who had been selected um, to organize an exposition, a permanent exposition inside the International Watercolor Museum because uh, this uh, installation, let's call it installation because it will be very big, will remain as a witness of the year of COVID with the same concept I done or really um, uh, invented uh, to uh, ask us to do the challenge, to join the challenge. So later on, when this video is finished, we will tell you uh, who are the um, uh, artists who painted the um, uh, artworks that will be um, permanent exposed in the International Watercolor Museum. And believe me, I was in the jury, uh, it, it was, not easy for us to decide. And, and just to give you some information, we decided that um, the selection should be done um, blind. I mean, we didn't know which artist had painted what paintings. So we choose only um, for our pleasure, for our being involved in the painting, for uh, uh, our wish to uh, to see in presence uh, th those that will be there. 
And the platform worked very well, actually, I must say. I, we didn't expect that the platform uh, was uh, developing into being a tool um, able also to give support for the selections and um, uh, uh, the artworks that were uh, downloaded by the artists themselves inside the database uh, of the um, uh, platform of the International Watercolor Platform were uh, organized into a, um, a file, a database file, and given to the jury members. And the jury members could only um, uh, receive the paintings with no names, and, and they could uh, decide which one they wanted to choose. There were uh, six members in the jury. Uh, no, five, sorry, five members in the jury. Now we, you will see later on because we will give you all the names. And we thought that the juror should, uh, should be people who knows the museum very well, who have been working um, to organize the museum, kind of the museum curators. I'm just watching the paintings now. And I think in a few years, if people look back, and they say, this was from the year of the COVID, but the paintings are so joyful and so colorful and so happy. I think it's in the darkness that the light shines brightest. Because we had heart to make us survive, Aidan. I think so, yes. <laughs> we were so lucky. We were very, very lucky to have art to support us in that period. I felt it very strongly. Something has to be said is that the, uh, the measure of the, the size of the painting was very small because we decided that um, we should ask uh, to paint a 20 by 20. Are you gone? A 20 20 uh, paper, just to give the concept uh, more meanings. And um, uh, so what we are now watching on our video may be bigger, but all of them are very small and many are so well painted, even if they were small, that this made me reevaluate the, that the small size is sometimes a value. So this is uh, truly amazing uh, where we can see uh, many horizons has come to a point and it is going beyond horizon, isn't it, Aydan? Yes, I think so, Raul. Uh, beyond the horizon, that's a lovely expression. I think when we look at the sea and we see the horizon, we wonder what's beyond the horizon. And that's what uh, inspires us to travel and to meet meet other people and meet other artists and share ideas and our life experiences. So. It is also beautiful to see that the horizon is not always on the same line, in the same point in the painting. And this, this depends even on the point of view of the artist and it is beautiful to be seen. I, I, I think so at least. Definitely. I did think maybe we should make the horizon one line and everybody paints to that line. But I said, no. Uh, no, we talked last year about rules and I think the idea was no rules. So the only rule was the square 20 by 20. We had to have some size for the exhibition in Fabriano to work. But the horizon could be inside, it could be outside, it could be up or down or slanty. <laughs> can be all, also high then. Yes. It's the idea of expand our horizons, like expand, uh, yes. Petra was saying, to step outside ourselves.
I will take a few words away from this conference. Uh, magic uh, game and play. There are three very important words I learned. Mm -hmm. And sharing. Yes, thank you. True. Ah. I know some of the artists that I recognize their work. And sorry, but we choose not to use the name, to, to put on the name of the artist uh, on the um, artworks because we didn't want to spoil them. We will do later when we will expose in the museum. Good idea. Okay, um, I close the sharing. Aidan, thank you a lot for inventing it and thank you a lot for doing the video because organizing three, three, more than 3,000 painting inside the video is a long job. It was and, fun, but it was a lot of work. 
Uh, thank you for facilitating it. And thank you, Clelia, for all your work too. And thank you everybody for contributing, for painting. Maybe next year we can reorganize the challenge with something new and something different also. Okay. But I, I think we can redo in, in some other ways. And thank, thank you for using the small badge you have in your uh, I never got a small badge, so I have to make a big badge. <laughs> Aiden, it's, it is always like something new from your side. Uh, you have started with the cap, now this badge is too big. Uh, <laughs> I sure am. Where are you? That's Fabriano behind you, I see. Very good. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And now it's nice to see you, Pizza. <laughs> yes. It's well, pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure to see you. Fantastic yes. challenge, Pedja. I loved all the works. Great idea. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Very That's valuable true. words. Yeah. Very valuable words from your side. Yeah, true. All of you, all of you, all of you guys really are doing a great job. Now uh, we have to show the selection we did. And later on, we, we show it very fast, just that the artists can, can know those that are in touch with us at the moment. And later on, maybe uh, we will post in our um, uh, blogger or in our website and they can go and, and watch uh, easy, in an easier way. So thank you everybody. At the end of the um, uh, presentation, I, we close the connection because then uh, Maria Ines, uh, Lucas demonstration will start soon after. Thank you a lot of all, okay. all of you. Thank you. I thank don't you. have Bye. the time to see you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. I share the screen again and I go to the um, list of the selection. And this is it. So this was the, the group of, ju of um, uh, the composition of jury, and it was myself together with Clelia Conti and Giovanni Balzarani and Domenico Di Mecon and Simon Marcin. Uh, all of them have been working a lot for the museum from the museum side, so they know very well what the museum is open to welcome and we decided they should have had a role inside this uh, very difficult decision to be to be made actually. So um, we are we have organized the paintings in a, um, uh, alphabetical order. Uh, so that is not uh, someone who won and someone who did not win. Uh, it is only a list of people who have been selected and Clelia will very soon ask them to get in touch and send the painting. So the first one you saw, uh, she's Agnes Gates and uh, Agnes Vanovsky. Sorry if I don't read the names properly, but uh, not all of them I know. Aidan O'Reilly. And I believe me, this is only a chance because none of us knew who the uh, paintings belong to. Alexander Gordienko, Alfonso Tejada, Ali Zadeh, Amanda Kahl, Anna Elena Fernandez Diaz, Andrea De Pasquale, Angela Barbi, Annette Williams, Annick Malotaux, Barbara Miller, Benny Gassenbauer, Brigitte Devist, Broderick Wong, Praful Udaker, Caroline Dibli, Kristen Brieland, Christine Sacker, Colin Musman, Coral Yen Shen, Charlotte Christine, Daniel Christian, Dieter Wistemp, 
donna Jill Whitney Egli Manzo Evelina Riolon Boito Federica Maffezzoni Foti Cliogheri Gier Hendrix Giorgio Smarienos Germana Snydero, Gertrude Snaker Bruin, Ida Tentolini, Ingrid Lefebvre, Isabel Moreno Alosete, Jasmine Dersain, Jen Rivier, Gerson Artero, Giuseni Cudano, Jen Machine Ramirez, Judith Mary Offor, Catherine Cristo, L.S. I don't know his names, Eldridge, Laura Hertz, Laura Vasquez, Lorraine McCracken, Lia Nixon, Lian Fritsch, Libby May, Lorena Frank Moore, Lorena Massa, Lorenza Aldri, Els Walden Schwings, Lucy Martins Boyato Brandmiller, Lucia Sousa, Luigi Scioli, Maya Anna Nieva, Maria del Pilar Inosa Cordova, Marilena Cologna, Marinella Lombini, Maria Cosniemi, Marta Ferrari, uh, sorry. Marta Ferrari, Martin Rubino, Kauser Hossein, Moshin Hossein, Mia Koneman, Miran Kim, Monica Nencini, Nadia Belardi, Naro Silvie, Mira Mecro, Nestor Flores Fica, Olena Gramatic, Olga Nigulumova, Regendra Mita, Raul Saria, Richel Eaton, Rinklef, Rosalba Bertolucci, Rossana Sgaravato, Sara Teverieri, Shinka Gang, Silvana Marelli, Silvana Stattile, Silvia Bandini, Sonia Mocnik, Susanna Abundis, Sushama, Svetlana Costina, Tatiana Brenner, Tatiana Smith, Terry Branks, Vera Muscina, Vilma Sacchi, Wied Meyer, Giulia Terentieva, Yves Quest, Zezze Lai. And with Zezze, we conclude and thank you everyone. And I am honored to will receive your paintings and to organize the show in the International Watercolor Museum. And um, I also advise that the list of the selected artists will soon, maybe tonight, be posted 
I, I believe we have to use the same way from where they come from inside the international watercolor platform. Thank you, everyone. And let's go meet later on with Pablos Michaelidis 